Hello and welcome back to the Health and Harmony Girls podcast. Yay. Before we start, you might hear some leaf blowing in the background. Yes, we, we have got the majority of it over and done with, but the leaf blower is diesel powered and <laughs> we sound like we are at the MotoGP, literally sitting on front row trying to record a podcast. So just bear with us. Bear with us. It's either the dogs or the leaf blower or there's going to be something, but mm. we are here with you. <laughs> we are present. <laughs> We're present. Try to be present too. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> okay. So today we are covering quite a cool topic and it's how to be a self-possessed woman. I'm quite mm-hmm. excited to dig into. We've got five things that you need to start owning, girl, mm-hmm. um, just to be a badass bitch and really not let external things influence or past things or pre- future things influence your self-worth, your self-confidence, your self-love, yourself, all of those selfy things. Okay. I feel like it sounds so weird to say how to be self-possessed. I know. <laughs> like, it just makes me think of a horror movie. I'm like, I'm like our next episode is how to get a free exorcism. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, another day in the life of our yeah. crazy moms. Okay. So number one is to own your past. And I think this is so important. I love it so much. And it's taken me about 32 years of my 32 years to Mm -hmm. realize that you cannot change the past. There's no point in feeling guilt, shame, um, anger, resentment, or whatever it may be to things that you might have done in the past or someone has done to you in the past because you Mm -hmm. can't change it. Mm -hmm. And when you learn to accept that that's just part of who you are and that is what made you who you are today it's so freeing because Mm -hmm. no one can use it against you and guys let's be honest if you're thinking about life in general life is so long your life is so long you have done we have done everybody has done something embarrassing at some point in their lives something that they're not proud of at some point in their lives many things they're not proud of at Mm -hmm. some point in their lives the more you fixate on that, the more guilty you're going to feel. And like Rox is saying, you literally cannot change it. Like you have to accept and move on from the fact that what's happened in the past has happened in the past and you have absolutely no control over it. Like no matter how hard you try, you will never be able to change the past. Mm. And I think so many people base their value and their worth on past things that they've done. Mm-hmm. Um, I know I did for a very long time. Mm-hmm. I've, I've done a lot of things that I shouldn't have. Like you said, we all we have. We all have. Go on. Um, but in my mind, like the things that I did were the worst things that I could have done. And mm-hmm. it brought so much shame and guilt into my mindset. And I really just held on to those things and almost let them define me, which does not Um, contribute to Mm -hmm. (laughs) self-growth so (laughs) at all I think as soon as you realize that we all fuck up Mm -hmm. we all make mistakes we all do stupid things that's part of growing part of learning part Mm of maturing evolving expanding we need to accept that we all make shitty decisions completely and move on and just make better ones going forward (laughs) (laughs) I just yawned so big I looked at myself on the screen I was like wow my tonsils I can see them (laughs) but girl I completely agree with you and I feel like what people don't realize is we fixate so much on the negative emotions about our past and how it makes us feel and how guilty we feel and you know how could I have been that person but we should rather look at the other side and be like what can I learn from this situation? Like, what do I not want to repeat in future situations? How can this help me in becoming a better me? Mm -hmm. I think if we look at our, (coughs) excuse me, bless you, was it a cough or sneeze? (laughs) I think if we start to um, look at these memories of our past um, mistakes, let's call them that, as failure, Mm -hmm. and like we always say, failure is feedback, it becomes it like shifts your perspective on these things. Cause now instead of being like, I'm so ashamed, I'm so, I feel so guilty. Like no one should love me because I did X, Y, and Z mm-hmm. rather be like, okay, this made me feel really like d- disgusted in myself. Mm-hmm. So what can I do going forward to never have to feel this again or to never have to go through the experience of what I did again mm-hmm. um, and use it as a learning tool. Mm-hmm. What, what to do differently, what to avoid, yes. what not to do. Yes. <laughs> it will completely help you in future mm-hmm. situations. Mm-hmm. And then number two guys is to own your emotional life. So we spoke about this in a po- podcast previously, which you guys mm-hmm. have hopefully listened to by now, but 
the moment you stop blaming and complaining, <laughs> <laughs> blaming and complaining, you get all of your power back. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we spoke about this many times about victim mentality and all of those emotions that you can go through and the states of like being that you can be at, but mm -hmm. own your emotional life, own your emotions, own your feelings, own those feelings of guilt, of anxiety, of stress, of pressure, of whatever it is that you're feeling at this point in your life. Um, own those emotional feelings or not emotional feelings because feelings are emotions, but just own those emotions and you do, you gain control back in your life instead of playing the victim or thinking that things are never going to get better to own your emotions is also like Rock said earlier. It's a very freeing experience mm -hmm. to be able to be like, you know what? Yes, I'm feeling anxious right now or yes, I'm feeling angry right now or I'm feeling depressed at this point. Like it is temporary and you are able to work through it and you are able to get to the other side. Um, it just takes time, but owning your emotional life is super important. Mm -hmm. And I love how you said, like, taking your power back. That's been such a theme for me lately, because mm -hmm. I think we give so much power to the situations that we find ourselves in, or mm -hmm. the people that we surround ourselves with, or the things that happen in our career, or our romantic relationships, or our family life, or whatever it may be. Um, like you said, the victim mentality mm -hmm. of putting the blame of the reason why we sad, we unhappy, we this, we that, because so-and-so was mean to me this mm -hmm. morning. No, that shouldn't make a fucking difference to your life, to be honest. Preach. You need to take your power back. If you realize that happiness comes from within mm -hmm. and you put on your uh, like bubble boy armor so mm -hmm. that every negative word or negative thing that comes your way just bounces right off, you're going to find yourself in a completely different mindset. It's a completely different vibration a completely different life because you've realized now that you can choose whether you let things affect you mm -hmm. or not simple as that <laughs> okay number three is to own your decisions so stop regretting stop wishing mm -hmm. decide and then go all in mm -hmm. I think this is so important because people are tend to get stuck in that like what do you want? How do you call it? Like a suspense mode, mm -hmm. not even suspense mode, but I can't think of a word now, but like we have all these goals and dreams and we just don't take the first step towards that goal or that dream. Mm -hmm. Or we say, okay, I'm waiting until the time's right. I'm waiting until I know more about this. I'm waiting until I get the money from so-and-so. We keep put, like putting our first move on other things that happen that are external to us and when we just realize that there's no time like the fucking present mm -hmm. like make that decision I want to make a million dollars cool what's the first thing you need to do probably start a company what's the first thing you need to do after that have an idea of what you want to do start an Instagram account start and get a logo like just get the ball rolling mm -hmm. even if it takes 10 foot years for you to make your first million you could not do anything for the next 10 years and then only then decide, okay, maybe I should actually start doing something towards this 10 million rand goal that I have. And I love that you use that because I'm like, owning your decision, Rox has used the example of like a big decision in your life, you know, changing for the greater good or future goals that you've got and just being in that like stagnant position of not moving. But I think also for me, what I relate to owning decisions is, those small decisions leading up to that big decision too because I mean I myself I've said it a million times I'm really indecisive and I find it really hard to like make a choice Rox knows she's busy smiling and I'm like <laughs> I can honestly go to a restaurant and it takes me so long to decide what I'm going to eat because I'm always like I don't think I'm scared but I'm always like what if I make the wrong choice and what if it's like not the best mm -hmm. and what if the other meal is better I'm just that's how I am and I try to be better and it's easier if you just look at it and go like own your decisions. Like Rox was saying, get the Instagram account, start the branding, whatever it takes. But you could sit and stare at your computer. Like those are the bigger decisions. You could look at the smaller decisions and be like, why is it taking me so long to pick a font? You know, mm. like own your decision and move on from it. Like make a decision, decide that that's what you want to do, move on from it. And you can always make changes in the future. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm even preaching to myself here. 
if I'm going back to a restaurant, I can always pick the other meal if the meal that day really wasn't that great. But some of us fuss over making decisions so mm. badly. And it really like, it actually frustrates me sometimes mm. being indecisive because I'm like, I really just can't make a decision. I mean, well, you can make a decision, but you get so irritated with yourself. So own your decisions because owning your smaller decisions is going to help you in getting closer to those bigger mm. decisions or bigger goals. Mm. Exactly. Number four is to own your desires as well. So be honest about what you want so that the universe can line things up for you. So this is something we speak about all the time, but whatever it is that you are wanting to work towards or that you're wanting to manifest into your life, focus on that, line up your list of how you're going to do it, how the steps of how you're going to get there, manifest it, think about it every day, write it down, like we always say, write a pen to paper or write notes on your phone, but make sure that it's something that you're positively, positively focusing on and positively thinking about. And like we say, put the steps in place and the universe will know how to work with you, for mm. you, instead of just being like, Rox is using the example of money, I want to have a million dollars one day. Like, that's great, but when is one day? What is the time frame? How do you plan on getting there? The universe is not just going to drop a million dollars like on your lap as much as we would all mm -hmm. love that. But what are your steps towards getting towards that goal? So own your desires as much as you would own everything that mm. we previously mentioned. Yeah. I think for me, two things came up when you were just talking about the desires. And the first thing when it comes to desires is like a lot of people and we're going back to self-worth here, don't believe that they have the ability to achieve huge goals mm -hmm. or that they're worthy of success or whatever that big goal might be. So yes, it's easy to say own your desires, but if you feel like you could never be as successful or could never make that much money or could never find a perfect partner or whatever it may be, realize that and do some deep inner work because there could be something like a limiting belief mm -hmm. or something that is really holding you back from firstly like acknowledging that you can achieve whatever the hell you desire in this mm -hmm. world you can do whatever you put your mind to mm -hmm. and then the second thing with desires is that sorry I just had to, <laughs> to remind myself is that once I think that's why the first step is so important because if you don't believe you can achieve something hello law of attraction the universe can be like cool you don't you don't believe you can't you don't believe you can achieve that mm -hmm. I'm going to show you you can't mm -hmm. so you need to first believe that you can and then align your emotions your thoughts and everything to um attract more of what you desire mm -hmm. so whether it is maybe finding your perfect partner if you're constantly sitting and thinking to yourself, I'm not good enough, no one's ever going to love me, how could someone love me, I'm not perfect, I've made mistakes, you're not going to find a partner because you are attracting what you are giving out and you are giving out sadness, desperation, um, lack of self-worth. Mm -hmm. Yes, you might find a partner, but it might be the exact same thing that you're putting out and I can tell you now that's not going to be a healthy relationship. So you need to firstly believe mm -hmm that you deserve what you desire before you can own your desire and then align yourself with that desire so that the universe can be like cool look at this chick giving so much love to her friends and her family and being happy in herself and confident in herself and independent i'm going to send her someone exactly the same mm -hmm. and they're going to be the best couple ever Completely. so i think there's like obviously more to that than what you've spoken but there are so many different layers to being able to own your desires. Completely. I love that you speak about even relationships and stuff because I feel like whatever your desire is, whether it be business related, relationship goals, family orientated, whatever your desires are, if you at some point are experiencing self-doubt towards that, like Roxy is saying, it's not going to happen. So put those steps in place, believe in yourself, believe that you are worthy and you are capable of achieving these things or having these things in your life and the universe will grant it to you. So just remember that. Yes, queen. <laughs> okay, and then number five is to own your presence. So be intentional with the energy that you bring into a space from the thoughts that you think to the words that you speak. And I love this because I don't mm -hmm. think we realize how much our presence being present in our presence and with mm -hmm. people around us in our presence can completely change the situation the environment the um direction of 
how do I say, the direction that the day is going to go. And I mean, you can feel when you walk into a room of people and everyone's in a bad mood Mm -hmm. and no one's talking. And it's like so uncomfortable. It's so shit. And if you are that person who walks into a room angry, frustrated, um, sulky, whatever feeling you're feeling, you're going to leak that that onto other people. So just be more aware of the, the words that you speak in the presence of others, because also you never know how people are going to interpret, interpret what mm-hmm. you say to them. And even the thoughts that you think, because back to the law of attraction, if you walk into a room like these people are so cool, they're never going to like me, you're going to make yourself feel intimidated. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to be awkward. And then they're probably not going to like get along with you as well as if you were just authentically naturally you, your Mm -hmm. bubbly or funny or quirky or whatever your like oomph is, your essence is that you bring to the party. You're going to dim that because you've now got this thing in your mind that you are not intimidating. These people are too cool. They're not going to like me. So I think just going into any situation, being present and just being conscious of the thoughts that are going on in your head, Mm -hmm. because that can change your entire outlook on everything. And also the words that you speak to people will just completely change your entire life. And I love that you bring up that example of like walking into the room and feeling the energies in the room because Rox and I read something earlier and it was basically saying that you need to realize that you don't have to adapt to energies in a room right you don't have to adapt to the energy when you walk into a room you can feel like Rox was saying there's anxious um, energy in the room or there's maybe energy that's a little bit too hyped up for what you are currently in the state of being Whatever the energy is in the room, you never have to adapt to the energy in the room. Being present also allows you to influence that energy in the room. So instead of adapting to the energy in the room, rather influence the energy in the room with your own energy. Mm -hmm. So make it more comfortable for yourself. And being an influencer of energy in a room will also attract the people that are feeling or vibrating on that same energy in that Mm -hmm. room because I can tell you right now if you walk into a room and you feel this energy of anxiety a lot of the other people are probably feeling the same and yes some people are comfortable in that state because that's probably what they're experiencing but there may be also a handful of people in that room that are feeling the same really not into the anxious energy at all and I think I'd actually like to use the example of going to a party right how often do people that are vibrating at the same energy attract to one another and meet on the dance floor or Mm -hmm. meet by the bathrooms or whatever the situation is you have people that are just like not in the mood to party today their feet are sore their backs are sore they're sitting on the side or they're sitting at the back still dancing to the music with their head but they're not on the same vibration as being on the dance floor and being there today Mm -hmm. who are they going to attract the same kind of people who are going to take a seat next to them and be like you know what this is like way too high energy for me right Mm. now. Like I'm really enjoying this, but I really don't feel like being the dance floor. Then you get the people that are on the dance floor and are vibrating at the super high energy, are super excited, dancing around, singing, living their best life. And you bump into someone and you are just like singing the lyrics together and you've never met this person Mm. in your life. Like that's the greatest example I can use. I love that. I love that. Especially because energy is like a real thing it's mm-hmm. not we were it's not like made up imaginary it's issue. fact it's fact it's scientific fact it's okay? scientific fact and also you emit energy depending on what mood you're in so mm-hmm. that's why you'll find if you walk into a room and you are feeling happy and excited and like just got that thing for life zest for life that's the word <laughs> you'll just attract for life. people who are looking and attracted to that energy mm-hmm. so yeah I think it's just so important to realize especially dep- I guess it depends on what environment you're going to but like let's say for example a job interview mm-hmm. go into it nervous um maybe feeling like you're underqualified feeling like you're not good enough, the chances are you're probably not going to get that job because the people can feel that energy on you straight away. And mm-hmm. like, she was very timid. I don't think she really has the skills that we need. Um, whereas if you go into that interview 
fucking arrogant as shit knowing that you are overqualified mm-hmm. this is your job already mm-hmm. obviously don't say that shit to the people yeah. who are interviewing you please that Be is humble. not a piece of advice we're giving you but if you go into an, an interview with the attitude that i've got this like mm-hmm. i'm qualified i'm gonna rock this job you're probably gonna have a much better chance of mm-hmm. getting that job completely agree so your energy it does not lie guys yes energies are completely real and Rox and I found also another, I mean, this entire podcast has been about basically owning it Mm. when it comes to being a self-possessed woman is just to own it. Like to put it short, sweet and simple is to own it, own your emotions, own your presence, own your everything, your desires. I mean, the list goes on, but Mm -hmm. also to just remember at the end of the day, as much as you need to own everything, if something is out of your hands, it also deserves freedom from your mind too. So if you don't have control over a situation or you don't have the ability to change, like we said, the past, or you have no control over the future, it deserves freedom from your mind. So don't fixate and possess yourself Mm -hmm. literally about thinking about the past, thinking about the future, worrying about what you did in the past, worrying about what's going to happen in the future. Nothing is in that frame of mind is going to help Mm -hmm. you. So if it's out of your hands, it's something cute to remember. If it's out of your hands, deserves freedom from your mind too. So I just really love that. I love that. Yeah, and I mean, when we say this all the time, the only thing you can control is your actions and your reactions. Mm -hmm. And when you actually deeply like understand that and accept that, it's so freeing because (laughs) you can't get upset about things anymore. Mm -hmm. You can't, I can't control the fact that it's going to rain on my wedding day or, you know, whatever's mm-hmm. going to happen is going to happen. And if you just accept that and like adapt to the situation and go with it, your life's going to be a lot easier than being like constantly angry because something happened that you didn't want to happen. Completely. And like we always say, there's, I mean, there's quotes about it, which you can read on, but it's something that stuck with me. Like from the beginning of my little journey that I started, I read it one day and it was always like, I now see it all the time, but it's something that really stuck with me from the beginning And living in the past means that you are living in depression and living in the future means that you are living in anxiety. So thinking about the past all the time is going to cause you to be depressed because there is no way that you can change it. And focusing on the future is going to cause you anxiety because it's the fear of the unknown. It's the fear of not having control over your current situation. But like Rox just said, and like we always preach about, you only have control over your current situation. You have no control over the past and you have no control over the future. Mm -hmm. So Just remember that and own your shit. Mm -hmm. And also being a present Mm -hmm. is like the greatest gift you can give yourself because Mm -hmm. you take in every moment, you notice the beauty in everything. It's just such a beautiful way to live. You're not worrying about something that might happen, might happen in Mm -hmm. the future or like feeling sad about something that happened in the past that you can't change. So be present girls. Yes. Ladies. Ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we hope you guys enjoyed that little podcast today. Um, just five, I think it was five steps, mm-hmm. right? Five steps um, that should help you, bitch. yes, to own your badass bitch badass self bitch. and to self-possess yourself. <laughs> <Woo-hoo>. Possession. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you guys for listening to another podcast. As always, please like and love and five-star rate and subscribe and all of the all of, those good all of the good, deliciously juicy things. And we will speak to you guys next week. Love you. Bye. Toodaloo.